Well, it is so good to have you joining with us online today and being a part of our church community. And whether this is your first time with us or your 101st time, we are delighted that you have chosen to spend this time with us. And our team of online pastors are really looking forward to connecting with you. You know, we've got some great praise and worship that our band are going to lead us in over these next few minutes. And then we've got a really inspiring message from Pastor Matt, who's going to be talking about how time spent waiting is not time spent wasted. And so we really hope that you'll stick around with us for that. And so without any further ado, let me include you all now in this prayer. And then we're going to lift up the name of Jesus together. Father, I want to thank you that you are not limited by time and space and that you're certainly not confined purely to the four walls of a church building, but you live in our hearts. And my prayer for everyone watching this this morning is that over these next few moments that we share together, that we would each encounter you and your amazing grace and love in such a real way and that our lives would truly be impacted and that each of us would know the hope and the peace that only you can bring. And so we open our homes and our hearts to you right now. And we say, come and meet with us, we pray. And I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bye. 
is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause nothing is as strong as your blood. Nothing is as strong as your blood. No. Strong as your blood, nothing is as strong as your blood. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our. This is how we find our battles. This is how I. Great, but your love was great. 
Well, I've got a few notices that I want to share with you over these next couple of minutes. And, and whilst I'm doing this, I'm going to ask you once again to get your phones at the ready so we can all send a few people a message or two, letting them know that we're thinking of them. Now, first of all, our Tuesday night prayer meetings are taking place again each week at eight o'clock, lasting for just one hour. And we would love you to join with us for these. Whether you can join for the whole hour or just for a part of it, it's entirely up to you. But right now, more than ever, you know, it's so important that we are a praying people. The details on how to access these are being posted up each week on our Facebook and our Instagram pages. Now, secondly, our online alpha course got underway on Friday and we are looking at starting up another one that will also take place through the week. Now, if you're not that sure what alpha is or you don't know who it's for, then take a look at this. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. My girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible, but the truth is none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning.
Now, if you or someone you know might be interested in being a part of that course, then please drop us a quick email at alpha at lakesidechurch.uk and we will get back in touch with you with all the details. Okay, just a couple of other things very quickly then. If it's your first time with us today, we would love to hear from you. All you have to do is go onto our website, www.lakesidechurch.uk and at the bottom of that page, click on where it says contact us, tick the appropriate box and then send that over to us and we would love to get back in touch with you and say hi and as a little thank you, we'd love to look at how we can get one of our Lakeside pens over to you. And then one final thing now before we take 60 seconds to send some text messages to one another and that is to thank you for your ongoing generosity and faithfulness in your giving and to ask you to please continue to do this as the ministry is still continuing. And there's a few ways that you can do this that are simple and secure. First of all, you can give through your smartphone, you can text your giving, the details of what to do are on the screen for you right now. Or alternatively, you can give through Gift, that's an app that you can download from the App Store. Just register your details with them and then scroll through the list of churches that you'll find on there to Lakeside Church, Southport. Or if it's easier for you and you've got access to your banking online, you can make an online transfer direct into the church account. The details again are here for you now. But with all of these, whichever one you might choose, if you've got any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we will help you with that. Okay, I hope you've got your phones at the ready because it's time for our online Minute Mingle. So choose a few people in your contacts whose names begin with the letters A, B or M, that's A, B or M, and just send them a quick message over this next minute to say you're thinking of them. Once again, are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Well, good morning, Lakeside. It is so great to have you join with us. Wherever you are, we are glad that you're here. I really believe that I've got a message on my heart for you this morning, one that I pray will bring you comfort and will strengthen your hope today with whatever you're facing. So why don't you grab a Bible and sit down with your cup of tea and some snacks. And if you've got a Bible and iPad right in front of you, why don't you turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to read the first 20 verses and then dive into what what I believe God may may want to say to us today. So 1 Samuel chapter 1, reading from verse 1, the first 20 verses, the scripture says this, There was a certain man from Ramathame, a Zuphite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroam, the son of Eliu, the son of Tahu, the son of Zuf, and Ephraimite. He had two wives, one was called Hannah and the other Penina. A Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinus, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. 
This went on year after year. And whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? And once they had finished eating and and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you've asked of him. And she said, may your servant find favour in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. What a great passage of scripture that is. And I want to speak to you today from uh, just a simple thought that I've titled this message, Waiting is Not Wasted. Waiting is not wasted. And right now in what we're facing, we're doing a lot of waiting. But I really believe that you'll see, hopefully by the end of, of this message, that our waiting is, is not wasted. So wherever you are, why don't you pray with me for a moment as we dive into this scripture today. Father, thank you for this time that we get to share together wherever we are. Thank you that you're present. And we pray right now that through your Holy Spirit, you would teach us the truth of your word. Thank you that you're with us right now, guiding us and leading us. Help us see Jesus so clearly today. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to take you back nine years. I know that's, that's probably quite hard to remember nine years, but I want to take you back nine years to the story of a, a young couple on the brink of making one of the, the most important decisions that any young couple could ever make in their relationship. On a, on a, a crisp but, but stunning morning in November 2011, this handsome, tall, muscular man was, was about to ask the girl of his dreams to marry him, a decision that would change both of their lives. And we stood outside this this beautiful castle in a a, a small town in the the south of Wales. This man gets down on one knee because he's a traditionalist and believes that's what every woman wants. He gets down on one knee and asks this girl to marry him. It's the stuff of legends. It's the stuff that you would only see in movies and read about in romantic novels. is an incredible love story and he's down on one knee and he asks the question and then he waits and waits and waits and now this man two months previous had had knee surgery to repair damaged ligaments and so being on one knee which unfortunately he chose to go on the knee that his surgery had been taken on is now feeling the pain and the anxiety of waiting for a decision. What seems like an hour, in reality is probably only a minute until in a moment, this girl opens her mouth and says the words that every hero wants to hear. It's not, I've got snacks in my bag for you, however much I wish that was how the story went. The, 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 The answer that she gave was the best answer she could give. Is a yes. 
You may have guessed it by now, by looking at me, that I am that handsome, tall and muscular man. I know nine years can, can change a person a lot. That is the true story of, of how I asked my uh, beautiful Welsh wife, Maria, to marry me. I know you didn't think I was that romantic, but what can I say? I am the hero of the story and I am available to offer tips if anybody would like any. Whether you want to take them, that is your decision. But I think that our story really connects to the story of, of Hannah that we've just read. Hannah had a really painful time waiting for something that she didn't even know was going to happen. I know my pain was, was a physical pain in my knee waiting for the answer to my, my question. I think most of us at some point in time find ourselves in a, a season of waiting. Maybe a season waiting for an answer that we don't know is going to come. A season waiting on, on God or a season like we're in at this moment, waiting for something to pass so whatever normality is can potentially resume again. And I think that then looking at this scripture, there are just a couple of things that I want to highlight, just a couple of observations that I want to make that I really believe that will be tools in your hand as we, as we face this wait in time. Things that looking at Hannah's life, I really think can build our faith and encourage our hope and bring us comfort in the times that we are facing right now. So if you're a note taker, everybody knows that when we get to heaven, God is going to ask us to, to show him all the notes we made from sermons. So if you're a note taker, this is a great opportunity for you. But the first thing that I notice from, from Hannah's story, from how Hannah lives through this, this, this painful moment and this waiting season in her life, is this, that prayer is not a last resort. It's a first response. Let me say it again. Prayer is not a last resort. It's a first response. See, many times I've, I've caught myself saying and using a phrase that I don't think is a, is a helpful phrase. Uh, there's been times in my life when I've been, been in a difficult situation, a painful moment, a dis, discomfortable time. I don't even think that's a word, but it is for the sake of this. You know what I mean. There's moments that we all go through that are, that are painful, that are hurtful, that are hard. And uh, oftentimes I find that, that I try and fix it myself. I want to I wanna solve the problem and, and, and get through it. And then when that doesn't work, I, I say these words, well, all, all I can do now is pray. I've even done it as, as a pastor. People have come to me and, and shared something that they're going through in their life. And I often sometimes will try and fix it or, or, or give whatever advice or wisdom that, that I could and, and tell them that, that it'll be okay. And I forget to even offer to pray. And I'm grateful for the grace of God, that, that, that God is doing a work in me as he is in you and that we are being transformed daily from glory to glory more and more into the into the likeness of Jesus but I think there's there's a couple of things wrong with with that statement when we say that all we can do now is pray I think that the first thing is that maybe it implies that we want to try everything else because we believe that we're capable of solving it and we're capable of sorting the issue out and we're capable of healing ourselves and making everything okay and so we try everything in our own strength and when that doesn't work it's only then that we come to God and ask him to save us in the 11th hour. Maybe it shows that we, we think we can do things in our own strength. The, the second thing that I notice is that Maybe it makes out that I, I, I believe that prayer is sometimes pointless. Maybe I think sometimes it's powerless and that it can't change anything because if I believe that, that prayer has the capacity to change things and turn situations around, then why would prayer not be my first response? And ultimately, this comes down to something that I'm learning. It's something I shared in our, in our Tuesday night prayer meetings, which Shameless plug, eight o'clock every Tuesday night, we get together and pray for an hour. You are more than welcome to join us. You can get the link through any of our, our, our social media platforms. But something I'm learning is this, that the power of prayer is not in the one that's praying. It's not in me. It's not in the, the, the eloquence of my vocabulary. It's not in the, the phrases that I use. It's not how long or how short I pray. The power of prayer is not in the one praying. The power of prayer is in the one that we are praying to. 
If we truly believe that God is all powerful, that he is sovereign and that God is in control, then why would we turn to anything or anyone else as a first response and leave God to be the last resort, a hopeful, wishful prayer? I think that our response to things can show us where our trust and our confidence truly is. It doesn't mean that we ignore wisdom and we ignore common sense, but it means that if our response is not to turn to God, our faith is in something else. And faith that is not founded and built on the cornerstone on Jesus Christ is weak faith. But we see here Hannah's response. And I think it's an incredible response to the pain that that she's facing in her life at this time. See, Hannah was barren at this moment, wasn't able to to have children. The scriptures even say that the Lord had closed her womb. And in Old Testament times, if a woman was barren, unable to have children, she was viewed as cursed. This is a really serious thing for this culture. Hannah was viewed as a cursed person. And so her husband's other wife is taunting her because she has other other sons and daughters. She's provoking her. She's mocking her. She's causing her so much pain. And Hannah herself is having these strong feelings. She's saying she's got deep anguish and grief. She weeps bitterly. And yet in the midst of all of this, Hannah's response is first and foremost to turn to God and to pray. Have back a look at verse 10 and see what she says. It says, in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. She didn't pray when her anguish had passed. She didn't pray when everything had been resolved. It says, in her deep anguish, in the middle of the storm, right at the heart of the deepest pain that she had ever felt up to this point in her life, Hannah prayed to the Lord, even while weeping bitterly. I don't know what you're going through, whether you're facing a really difficult, awful situation. And if you are in your deep anguish, call out to him. Scripture says that he draws near to us as we call on his name. He's near to the brokenhearted. He heals and binds up the brokenhearted. And Hannah's response is incredible. And I think it shows us that, that, that faith, I think, is, is seen most beautifully, not necessarily in the high moments and the successful moments of life, but I think faith is seen so incredibly in those low and painful moments. And Hannah had a choice to make in the lowest moment of her life. Is she going to turn to God or is she going to turn away from God? In this situation that we are facing as a human race, as a nation, as a community, we have a choice daily. Are we going to turn away from God and blame God and and, and think that God is not going to save us and not going to bring us through this? Are we going to turn to God? And in our anguish, in our uncomfortability, in our pain, in our confusion, we're going to pray. We don't want prayer to be a last resort. We want it to be our first response because we believe not just that prayer changes things, but when we pray, God moves and God acts. Even though we can't see it, we believe he's working. And even though we may not feel it, we can have confidence that our God is sovereign and our God is in control, that he is acting on behalf of his people. I think when we then turn to God, as a first response instead of a last resort. I think we'll see like Hannah did, something else that's really important. So if you're taking notes, this is my second handle today, that that time waiting is never time wasted with God. Let me say it again, time waiting is never time wasted with God. You see the scriptures there a couple of times, it says that year after year, It says year after year, Hannah was provoked by her husband's other wife. And year after year, they would go up to the house of the Lord and offer sacrifices. Year after year, Hannah waited through the pain, through the mocking, through the shame of people assuming that she's been cursed. Hannah waits on her God. And I think what amazes me about Hannah's waiting season is that 
She didn't have a promise from God that she was going to have a child. There was no guarantee that God was going to answer her prayer in the way that she would have loved it to have been answered. But she still waited on God. She still chose to put her faith in her God instead of what was happening around her. And this kind of reminds me of one of my favourite stories from Scripture that I share quite often because I think it's so poignant for us. It's a story of three young men called Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And the simple story is that they, they are in this kingdom where the king builds an idol and wants all the people to bow down and worship this man-made idol. And yet Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego follow the Lord God. And so they refuse to bow in worship to this idol. And when they refuse to bow, they're then threatened with death, that they'd be thrown into this furnace and killed if they do not bow down. And yet the, the, the three boys say incredible things that showcase their faith. They say, well, our God is able to save us. And then they say this, but even if he doesn't, we won't bow down and worship this idol. But even if he doesn't, here's Hannah. She doesn't know if God's going to answer this prayer in the way that she wants. She doesn't have a promise that she's going to have a child. But she declares that I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to trust in my God, even if it doesn't work out how I want it to. I'm going to believe that he's God, that he's sovereign, and that he has a purpose through what I am facing. If I'm honest, I think if I was in Hannah's place, it would be quite easy to lose sight of God in and amongst this waiting season. It would feel almost like we're wasting time, waiting for something that we didn't even know if it was going to happen. I think it would be easy for us to lose sight of God's guiding hand and his presence with us in those moments. Think of what King David even says in Psalm 13, verse 1. He says, How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? You can hear the pain behind the words. How long will you forget me forever? And you may be in a season where those words really resonate with your spirit. You feel like God may have forgotten you and left you behind and forsaken you. And yet, I want to say something directly to you and I really believe that this is for somebody who is watching this message today. I want you to hear this. God has not abandoned you. God has not forgotten about you. The time that you're spending waiting on him, the prayers that you have prayed, it's not time wasted, but this is time that has been invested. It's time that God is using to shape you and transform you more and more into the image and the likeness of his son. He has not abandoned you. It's a time where God is working on your behalf, even if you can't see the outcome just yet. Hold on. Keep the faith, keep hope. God is working and he has not left you. I firmly believe that when Hannah would look over her life years after this season, years after her waiting, I firmly and truly believe that the many years she spent praying and the many years that she spent waiting, the tears that she prayed, the anguish and the grief that she felt, I truly believe when she looked back on that time, she would not see it as a wasted season, but as a precious time. I, I, I think back on the time that I spent down on one knee through the pain and through the anxiety, not knowing if the girl of my dreams was going to respond favorably. Knowing now what I know, I would do it all again, even through the pain, even through the anxiety. I really believe that one day we'll look back on this time of waiting, that the season that you're in, it may be painful right now, it may be hurtful right now, it may be uncomfortable and it may be difficult right now, but I really believe that one day you'll look back on this pain and you won't see pain, you won't see uncomfortability, you won't see discomfort, you won't see hurting, you won't see grief or anguish, but you'll see God's blessing and you'll see God's presence in and amongst that circumstance. I really think this is what Hannah would have done. Looking back on this season, she would have seen God's guiding, providing hand throughout it all. 
Hannah waited year upon year. And then the scripture comes to an incredible moment. These amazing words that I pray will bring you hope and comfort in this waiting season that you may be in right now, that we're all in right now to a certain degree. It says this in verse 20. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. We're not told how long Hannah had to wait. We don't know how many years it was. We know it was repeated year on year, year after year. We don't know how long she prayed for. We don't know how many tears she cried. We don't know how deep and hurting and painful the anguish and the grief was. But what we do know is that in the course of time, the right time, in God's time, he answered the cry of her heart and through Hannah brought a young boy called Samuel into the world and Samuel would grow up to be one of the greatest prophets and leaders of God's people, the Israelites. He would be the prophet who would anoint Israel's first two kings, Saul and David. He's got two books named after him in the Bible and that was all done through Hannah, through her waiting, through her choosing to respond in prayer to God first and not last, through her pain and her suffering, choosing to wait on God and God brings about his incredible plan. If I'm honest, sometimes I don't understand why we have to wait. I don't like waiting. It is not uh, an enjoyable experience most of the time and yet there is always a purpose. God is a purposeful God. Everything God does is intentional. So if you are waiting now, there must be a reason because nothing catches God by surprise. He is sovereign. He's the one on the throne. He's in control. He's the one who ordains your life. He's the one who knows how many hairs are on your head. He's the one who formed you wonderfully and fearfully in your mother's womb. He's the one who knitted you together. And so there's a purpose for your life and it will happen in God's timing. I want you to listen to some scriptures that, that talk about God in regards to time and, and timing. And I pray that they would encourage you and that the Holy Spirit would breathe life into these, these scriptures today. The first one in Psalm 18 verse 30, the first part simply says this, as for God, his way is perfect. See, God does not make a mistake. Everything he does is perfect. That doesn't mean that I understand everything that he does, but it does mean that everything he does is perfect and it's good. The second one in Psalm 31 verse 15, it says that my times are in your hands. My times are in your hands. If you have received Jesus as your Lord, then your life is in his incredible hands. These are the hands that, that created the world and the hands that healed people. They're the hands that hold all things together and they're the hands that were nailed to a cross for us. The last one, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. It says this most beautiful phrase, it says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Let me say that again. He has made everything, everything, everything beautiful in its time. Everything has a time. The season you're in has a time when it started and it'll have a time when it ends. The pain that you feel has a time when it started and it has a time when it ends. And when that time comes in its correct time, in the time that God has ordained, he will make it beautiful. He will turn it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God will turn for good. The pain that you may feel right now, that you may be in this season where it hurts so much, in its time will be made beautiful. The confusion that you may have right now, in its time will become clear. The waiting that we are doing right now, in its time, will turn into blessing. Your waiting is not wasted. You may be listening today 
And you may never have made a decision to receive Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and your Saviour. But I want you to know this. He is waiting for you. He loves you with a love beyond anything you can imagine. It is a love so unconditional and so passionate that is for you that he chose to die on a cross for you, to take away your sin, to wash you as white as snow and to transform your life. So what I want to do, if you want to make that decision to put your life in the hands of our incredible, loving, ever-present, good God and Father, then what I'm going to do is a prayer, a very simple prayer. I'm going to ask if you want to make that decision that you would pray this along with me wherever you're watching this. And then if you've prayed this prayer after me, I'm going to ask that however you're watching this on YouTube, church online or Facebook, that you just give us a comment to let us know so that we can get in contact with you. Whether you want to email us or or phone us, it's up to you. But please get in contact if you if you want to make this decision today. So why don't we pray? And I'm going to ask if you make this decision, you pray this with me. Father, thank you that you created me in your image and thank you that you love me so much that you would send your only son to die for me so that I can have new life. I repent of my sin, God, and I receive your forgiveness. I receive your life and ask Jesus that you would come into my life and transform me into a brand new creation. In your name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that, please get in touch with us today. Church, we are thinking of you. We love you. I'm going to hand back to the band who are going to lead us in a final song in our time together today. God bless you and stay safe.
Well, we want to thank you for being part of our church this morning and hope that you feel inspired and encouraged by all that you've seen and heard. You know, Lakeside is so much more than what happens on a Sunday. We're online through the week and would love to continue the conversation with you. So please do contact us and look at ways that you can connect with us through this coming week. Until then, we pray that you'll remain in great health and stay safe. May God bless you.